are a family of private investigators, and the, uh, the novels are all narrated by Isabel Spellman, who's about 28 to 30. She has a younger sister, Ray, who's 14, and her older brother, David, who's a lawyer, and the only Spellman to escape the family business. And the Spellmans are rounded out by Albert and Olivia, the parents. Um, the one unique thing about the Spellmans is because they're private investigators, they don't leave their work at the office. Let's say that. <laughs> The germ of the idea for the Spellmans came when I worked at a family-run PI firm in the Bay Area, and um, it was a really affectionate office tinged with paranoia. So, you know, your days were filled with hugs, and don't forget to shred that. Who called? What did he say? Well, what did he say exactly? What did he want? So I liked the idea of, like, the, co the contrast between warmth and paranoia. <laughs> I started at the PI firm doing administrative work and then I pretty much begged for several months straight to get on a surveillance and they finally let me do it. And I have to say, I did get to hop into a cab and say, follow that cab. The person I was doing the surveillance with, he, he basically, we were talking on radios and he, um, he pulled his truck around and I had to get out of the cab and in the middle of traffic hop into his truck and then we went on a high speed chase. The best thing I got to do on the job was I got to go into a bar following a suspect and just order a beer in the middle of the day and listen in on the suspect's conversations. And I remember the, uh, the, the barmaid saying to the guy, Joey, are you talking about killing people again? <laughs> I, I wrote about Isabel because I, I hadn't seen representations of women in fiction and especially film that I related to. She, she is a feminist, just it, she doesn't have to call herself that. She thinks about what she wants in terms of who she is, not in terms of what kind of shoes she's going to buy or what kind of mate she's going to find. I mean, she, I'm, she, I'm sure she buys shoes because she walks around. So I'm not saying that she's totally against those things. And she's certainly, I mean, dates, <laughs> not successfully for the most part. I mean, I'm not saying, the, I don't want to minimize these things and say they're not important, but I always felt like I wanted to show a woman who was flawed and funny and other things came first. Whenever I hear the description of Isabella's Dirty Harry meets Harriet the Spy, uh, I like it. Uh, I came up with Nancy Drew meets Dirty Harry, which I always thought was maybe at the time a little bit funnier, but um, now Dirty Harry meets Harry at this moment makes me laugh. My favorite description of Isabel Spellman is Nancy Drew after a bottle of Jack Daniels. That's my favorite. I had a lot of affection for Uncle Ray. I really sort of felt like I understood him in some ways, like I knew what it was like to sort of have this thing go wrong in your life and think you couldn't fix it, but still stay like a decent human being. That's what I love about him. Um, I love them all, but obviously since I'm writing from the perspective of Isabel, I, I'm channeling her the most. So in some ways she can annoy me, because it's like she's, her voice is always in my head. And when people say, oh, are you Isabel? I'm not. It just she feels like someone else that's sort of with me a lot of the time. I think that it's impossible to write like humor from another perspective. It's, it would be like, like if I tried to channel Benny Hill, I wouldn't be able to. I don't want to, thank God. I mean, nothing against, if you like Benny Hill, that's great. It's okay to like Benny Hill, I think. Well, I'm thinking a huge explosion. I want to be, when I'm free of them, I want to be free of them. I don't want any like, you know, well, they could be the ghost of the Spellmans. I guess I could do that. How is it going to end? The Spellmans are going to end, is what I'm saying. For sure. <laughs>